Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, just a couple days before E3 officially kicks off with Nintendo show on Tuesday, I wanted to discuss some final thoughts about the design, philosophy, and the style of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And I also want to go and do some discussion about the rumors that have been coming up as of late, that the style and that the overall presentation of the game is going through some kind of radical change behind the scenes, and the next time we see it, it's going to be quote-unquote, much improved. That's a lot of garbage in my opinion, and let's discuss it right now. Now, as I've covered on the channel here previously, ever since the reveal of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there's been some fans who have been disappointed, I believe is probably the right word, in the art style and direction of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the remakes that we are getting from Ilka Inc. in partnership with Game Freak later this year. Specifically, I want to say November 18th or 19th is what we learned the release date will be. And since that first trailer, we really haven't seen anything else. It's been radio silence since February. On the Legends Arceus front, there was one foreign trailer that got released, but it used the exact same footage as the original, and we just got some different music a couple weeks back. But with BDSP, we've gotten absolutely nothing. And also, as you've noticed in previous videos, I finally gotten used to that moniker, BDSP, that acronym. It's finally stuck, I think. I'm not saying something else anymore, which some people have commented on in previous videos. We're, we're good for now. But the art style's been very, very, very controversial. A lot of people don't like the chibi style. And even more so, there's plenty of people who like the chibi style. For example, people who liked the Link's Awakening remake and thought it looked good, thought it was an enjoyable game, thought it was a good experience to bring an old game onto the Nintendo Switch. But they feel that the product for BDSP is lesser. They feel it's more toy-like, it's too plasticky, the models don't look particularly good. Some people have an issue with the environments. People feel that they're just essentially ripping the old ones and bringing them into the current instead of basically sprucing it up a little bit. For instance, trees are in the exact same location, grass is in the same area, routes are placed are exactly the same. It's a faithful remake after all. There's been a lot of that. There's been a lot of controversy. I've addressed some of this controversy on my channel. I've talked about how I, for the most part, do agree with some of the critics in that I think the models need to look better. I don't have a problem inherently with a chibi art style. Would I have preferred a sword and shield style Sinnoh region? I think if you're putting me up with a lie detector test, I would say yes. That is something that I would have preferred. It's something that I made speculation videos on leading up to the original reveal of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and this was before we knew about Legends Arceus, before we knew about Game Freak's big push into the open world genre. It was a different world uh, pre-February 2021 with Pokemon. But we're in June, we're coming up to E3, a lot of us are expecting there to be some news next week, we haven't gotten a Pokemon Direct or a Pokemon Presents, we haven't had a random trailer drop, which leads a lot of people to think next week, Tuesday, which is when Nintendo's big E3 event is, we're going to see these games in some capacity. And if we don't see these games in some big blowout trailer, maybe we'll see them in the treehouse. There's going to be a Nintendo treehouse following the event. And in treehouse of the past years, we've gotten Pokemon gameplay. In Nintendo's treehouse in 2016, we got Pokemon Sun and Moon gameplay. In the Nintendo treehouse for 2018, did brilliant? No, in 2019, when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out, we got Nintendo Treehouse footage. That that Treehouse is infamous now in the Pokemon community. That's where we got the original reveal that not all the Pokemon were going to be coming back. It was a it was a hellscape for a couple weeks after that. If you guys were around, let me tell. Oh God, it was it was ridiculous. But by all assumptions, we are going to see these games very soon, which leads me to the topic of discussion today. There have been some leakers, some prominent people who claim to have sources within the Pokemon company within Nintendo, very famous video game leakers, a couple popular and relevant Pokemon specific leakers, specifically on Twitter, who have put out some things in recent weeks saying that the next time we see Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we're going to see an overhaul of the graphics. Now, famously, a couple weeks back, a video got leaked onto Reddit or 4chan or some one of those websites that showed an, a dramatically different Sinnoh region. The models were a lot taller. They were more true to form of what a person would look like. The chibi style had been dramatically nullified. The lighting had been improved. The world itself just looked like it had essentially been stretched a little bit more to reality from what the chibi style originally was. And of course, very quickly, that got debunked. Everybody was very, it looked good. Listen, it, it looked 
pretty good. If they had shown us that in February, I would have been really excited. But very quickly, most people understood this is not real. This is something a fan made. The I believe the person who made it actually came out and said, I made this. This isn't official. This isn't a leak or anything of the sort. So we're still stuck with the chibi models that we got in the original reveal. Now, Central Pokemon is the Twitter account that leaked this, that quote unquote leaked that the next time we see it, there's going to be improvements. I don't disagree with that. Is there a chance that overall the game presentation looks more polished? Yes. Famously, Luigi's Mansion 3, when it was first shown off, looked a lot less polished than the final product did. The lighting wasn't where they wanted it yet. The general atmosphere and feel of the game wasn't where they wanted it. The gameplay mechanics hadn't been fully refined. You gotta keep in mind, we see these games before development is done. A lot of the time for a lot of companies, I know it's not usually the case with the Pokemon company specifically, but for most game devs, what we originally see from a game is very rarely what we eventually get. There's usually massive jumps, big improvements in terms of performance, and a lot of these different aspects to the game that are so vital to the enjoyment from the, the, the person who's buying it, the fan. Legends Arceus is probably going to go through a similar thing. We saw some of the models in those games looked really rough. Low frames, the chingling, the famous 3 FPS chingling. There's over a year of development to go on that game. We're going to see improvements. And for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I think it's important to understand that we're not dealing with Game Freak here. Junichi Masuda is helping in development, but it is a, an entirely separate company that is developing this game. It's something that I see a lot of people get wrong in the comment section quite a lot. Ilka Inc., are the developers who are heralding this project. They're the ones who are putting this game together and giving it to us, and then Game Freak and the Pokemon Company and Nintendo distribute it, publish it, blah, blah, blah. They're, we don't know what their, their development practices are. We don't know how refined the lighting engine looks to this point. We don't know how polished the world environments look. We barely know anything about if there's going to be any changes within the Sinnoh region. We barely know anything about how it's going to be connected to the features we saw in Platinum. There's going to be things that are different from the original game, in, in my opinion and in most people's opinions in the Pokemon community, and there's also going to be things that are different from the original trailer. The, the lighting engine will look different. The models might be more polished, might be more refined. They might look more, how do I put this, more natural as opposed to more toy-like. You might see it change very slightly. I'd be perfectly willing to think we're going to see that, but... I think fans need to put their expectations in check because I've been seeing a lot of Poketubers and a lot of fans within the Pokemon community who are who seem to be building up these expectations that the next time we see this game, there's going to be some dramatic dramatic leap. There's going to be some big improvement, a massive improvement, a, a, a notable improvement to the point where you're going to have people writing about it and making tons of videos about it like, oh, look at this change because of some of these leaks. And I think that a lot of us who have been around this community for a long time understand that yes, we're going to see changes, we're going to see alterations, we're going to see improvements, and we're going to see things get more refined as we get to the release, and as we get closer to November, we are definitely going to see more trailers, more information, we're going to know the scope of these games, fairy type, mega evolution, inclusions of platinum, all of that. We're going to see all that, we're going to start to see it very soon. We just got to be a little more patient. But for people who are thinking we're going to see a dramatic overhaul because of the fan reaction, I don't think... They have a proper understanding of one, how big of a juggernaut Pokemon is. If they put out the product that they revealed in February, it would sell millions upon millions of units and it'd be incredibly profitable. Let's not kid ourselves. This is a profit-driven business. These games sell like hotcakes. Sword and Shield, one of the most controversial Pokemon games in the franchise's history, if you listen to social media, that is, is the second best-selling release in the franchise's history. These games have done really well. These people who are marketing these games, who are trying to sell these games, they know what they're doing. They don't make these decisions in a vacuum. They're looking at market trends. They're looking at what fans and people are interested in. They're looking at what sells and what doesn't sell. And they're making these decisions based upon that. Look at Legends Arceus. If fans hadn't demanded an open world Pokemon game, you think you, if, if there hadn't been massive improvements on the open world genre in the last couple years, do you think we'd be getting Legends Arceus? I don't think so. The market adapts and changes as does the state of it. That's what we're dealing with here. I think we're going to see changes to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think we're going to see some slight graphical improvements, maybe some improvements to the lighting engine, which 
in my opinion, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you would know, is one of the strongest parts of this game. The lighting looks excellent in a lot of locations, at least in my opinion. The environments overall look really good. It's just the models they have to really refine. And I want to know what the scope of this game is. So with that being said, what do you guys think about these recent leaks? Do you think they're true? Do you think they're false? Do you think we're going to see a massive improvement moving forward? And when do you think we're going to see it? Will we see Pokemon show up at the big Nintendo E3 show? Or are we going to see it the day after, the day before, something to that effect? And with that being said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please be sure to hit that button. It does a ton to support me, does a ton to tell me what kind of videos you guys enjoy and what you don't. It's, it's important stuff for me to keep putting out stuff that you enjoy. And with that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.